This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I measure the thickness of a hollowed model? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have an example file here loaded in. So this is a Groot model here that was done by Thomas Russell. And the question is asking about taking a model like this that's been set up and hollowed for 3D printing and measuring the thickness of the model. So if I navigate over here to the tool palette and I just have the body of Groot here selected, and if I just come over here and turn off the base, if I rotate down below this, you can see that the model's been hollowed out. So it is a shelled model, so it has a certain thickness that's going all the way around, and it has a hollow inner core. Now with this model, let's say I have a printer that requires a certain amount of thickness in order to print the model. And so I need to take my model here and I just want to find out how that thickness is falling across the entire mesh. And then if I see any areas that are too thin, I can add a little more thickness to those areas so that it will print correctly. So first I need to take this model here and I just need to dissect it. So I want to just be able to slice through it and see the thickness all the way down. And to do this, I'm going to append a cube file, and then I'm going to set that cube to subtractive and then activate the live Boolean system. And this will give me an interactive way to scrub through the model and see the thickness all the way through. So to do this, I'm going to go to the tool palette, I'm going to the subtool area over here, and I'm just going to come down to this append area and just click this, which is going to open up the quick pick menu here. In here, I want to select the cube 3D object, and that is now going to append a cube 3D file to my scene. So you can see now I have Groot and his head is now in this cube. Now I'm going to come to the tool I have here that's already been hollowed, so the Groot model here. And I just want to set this arrow right here to active so it becomes a start group. I also want to make sure that I have the eyeball icon turned on for that subtool. And then I want to go to the box model here and instead of having it set to union, I want to set it to subtractive. And then now I'm going to go over here to the live boolean button here and activate this to activate the live Boolean system. You can see after I activate this, that where the box was in space has now been subtracted out. So now I'm left with a headless Groot model here. So now I can come down to my subtool palette and I can select that cube. I can activate the Gizmo 3D. I can make sure it's centered on my model by clicking this go to unmasked mesh center point here. And now if I take the Gizmo 3D and move it in space, it's going to reposition this box, which is set to subtractive, and it's going to allow me to cut through the model. So I can move this up and down, and this is going to allow me to see the thickness through the entire mesh. So as I scroll up and down here, you're going to see that I'm going to get a slice functionality. So I can see how that model is all the way across. Now as I'm doing this, if I zoom in a little bit here, you can see I have some thicker areas, but then I have areas right here that are pretty thin. So I want to go in and I want to measure these to see how thin these really are. So if they're too thin, I'm coming and add some more material to the internal side of the mesh here to thicken that up a little bit. So before we can measure, we need to also find the size of our model. So I'm just going to come up here and just turn off the live Boolean operation. I'm going to select my original Groot model and then just hide that cube quick. So for Groot here, let's say I want it to be 8 inches. So from here to here, I want this to be 8 inches. So I'm going to go and set the scale using Scale Master. So I'm going to come to the Z plugin tab here. I'm going to go to the Scale Master option here. And in here, with Groot selected, I want to click the Set Scene Scale. Now when I click this, it's going to open up this little dialog. And in here, I'm going to be able to set the unit of measurement that I want my model to be related to. So I want to measure this in inches. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select the largest inch value that comes up. So this 0.86 by 1.18 by 0.65. And then when you click this, it's now going to set your file to be in that value or that dimension. So you'll notice at the top here that my metric units up here is now in inches because I selected inches from that menu. So now if I go back to Scale Master here and I do sliders to subtool size, you'll see that Groot is not really at that 8 inches yet. So his Y dimension here, which is the value from here to here, is only at 1.779. So I want to make this 8, so I'm going to come to this value here, and I press 8, and then press Enter on my keyboard, and then after that is set, I'm now going to click this Resize Subtool option. When you click this button here, if All is enabled, it's going to go through and look at all the subtools in your scene, and it's going to resize them based on the subtool you have selected. 
So it's going to resize the Groot subdual to be eight inches tall, and then it's going to resize everything else to correlate to that change in scale. So I'm gonna click resize subtool here. I'm just gonna go through and scale everything. And then when it's done, if I now go back to scale master here and do sliders to subtool size, you'll see that now Groot is reading in at eight inches. So now that I have Groot at this eight inch size, I can now go back over here and turn on my cube. I can activate live Boolean again. And now I can come to that area that's looking a little bit thin and I can make sure I'm in a move mode up at the top here by pressing W on my keyboard, and then I can hit Y to get out of the Gizmo 3D, and this is now going to give me the transpose line. Now with the transpose line selected, after I've set my scene scale with Scale Master, now I can drag this transpose line on my model, and it's going to give me the dimensions from where I start and end the drag with the transpose line. So if I zoom in here and I say start from this point and drag to here, you're gonna see this is going to give me a value up here at the top of my screen. So the thickness right there is 0.5 inches. And then if I come say from here to here, you're gonna see that my thickness is 0.2 inches. So you can come through and use the transpose line along with live Boolean to slice through your model and then test the thickness out as you do this. So you can just use the transpose line to come through and see where the thickness are in certain areas. Now let's say I still want Groot at that inch scale, but I wanna measure with the transpose line in millimeters. So to do this, we just need to come back to our Z plugin tab here and just click set scene scale again. And now instead of having this be an inches value, now we can just select millimeters. And this value here should already correlate to that eight inches we already set. So now I can click this millimeter function here. You'll see that my transpose line value has now changed to millimeters. And now if I zoom into this area and drag the transpose line from here to here, you can see that's 1.3 millimeters. And then if I drag it from say here to here, you can see that's reading 5.58 millimeters. So you can easily change the dimensions of your measuring based on your transpose line by just simply setting the scene scale again and then choosing a different value in here. So that is a process which you can use with the transpose line and the live Boolean system to go through your model and then measure to check different thicknesses on a hollowed model. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.